Welcome to the windiest farm in Suffolk. One thing I have done is I finally managed to finish this walkway. We also got some lady goats. It has literally been so windy. You can hear it now, we're not used to this wind. Um, a couple of days, but well, we're on day five now of high winds. It's really starting to annoy me. Luckily, the only actual damage was the top of my roof. Uh, the felt came off and very annoyingly, I was literally up the ladder with the hammer and the nail in my hands to just um, hammer down the end flap that was caught in the wind and the entire thing <laughs> blew off, <laughs> disappeared into the hedge. There were quite a few swear words, um, but yeah, we are lucky. That's, that's the only actual damage. All the animals have been fine, no trees or anything like that. So it could have been a lot worse. So before the storms began, something else happened as well. So obviously we got JJ and we got those um, two Jacob sheep, but we also got some lady goats. Um, they're off down here. They're actually with JJ. So these are our three Anglo-Nubians. This girl, she is uh, two years old. She's called Eve. And then uh, she's half sister of these two. They're twins. And they are a year, yeah, just a, just a year old. Um, and they are Pi and Pixie. Um, and we've got them all together. So I know quite a few people that keep their goats together all year round. Um, and Anglo-Nubians don't tend to come into season uh, in the spring. They only tend to come in the autumn. If one of them does come into season and gets pregnant, that's fantastic because it just means that we will have some autumn babies and I'll also get some milk this year. They've been here about a week. I haven't seen them come into heat. Um, Claire, who I got them from, said they had been in season the three weeks before, um, but it remains to be seen whether they come in again because we are moving into spring now. Um, so. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna keep them all together and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see if anybody does come into heat um, and get pregnant. Now, the one thing I am unsure about with keeping them all as a group is what do you do when uh, one of the nannies finally has babies? I assume at that stage, you take her and her kids out because of course, I don't want JJ rebreeding her um, while she's got babies. And I don't want him to interrupt with the kidding procedure and with the kids and all the things like that. So I'm guessing you take the nannies out. If you keep goats together all year round, please let me know if that's what you do or how you handle it. But it's nice to have one place that they can all be together. And I don't really have to worry about the goats. The one thing that's been really funny as well is watching my weathers since the girls have been introduced. Even though they're castrated, they have still been mounting and showing all of that dominance. Um, they obviously don't smell like boys to JJ because JJ is will happily mount a nanny or a weather. Um, but the weathers certainly have been making eyes at the nannies and kind of not only mounting to create this dominant hierarchy, but also I think because they're really interested, particularly Venom. Venom absolutely adores the ladies. Um, and it's just quite funny to watch. You can also now really clearly see how much pygmy is in my weathers because they're the same age as the, the true Anglo-Nubians and um, they're quite a bit smaller, especially little Ulysses, who's, our, um, who's got a little bit of angora in him. But that's our flock. We now have nine goats uh, and that is it now. Nine goats until we have babies got our three pedigree girls, our one pedigree boy, and our five little weathers. So 
So very quick favor, if you're enjoying this video and the 100 days of farming series, please consider hitting the like button, hitting subscribe, and also hitting that bell notification so you're updated every time I post a video. And if you want to keep informed on everything that's going on at the farm, there is a link to my newsletter just below. Subscribe to that and you won't miss a thing. Now with all the wind and the rain, I obviously haven't been able to do a huge amount up here and I've concentrated on just sorting out the animals, making sure everybody is safe, and then um, tying everything down and then going home again. But one thing I have done is I finally managed to finish this walkway. So if you remember, I dug out this ditch. I made a little bit of a, a stream for when the water overflows. I put this bridge and then we dug through this bank to create this walkway. And then what I finished doing is putting in these steps here. So I used just the old wall that I'd taken out. It is fairly rotten, um, but it doesn't matter just for steps. It gives us a bit of grip. And I literally just dug in a bit of terrace, popped them in, secured them with some more, um, some more dirt. And now we can actually go up and down without falling over. My roses also arrived. So these aren't roses for the market farm garden uh, to sell as cut flowers. They're Rose Rugosa, also known as the beach rose. Um, they're just for landscaping up at the lookout and the goats. So I've put some in here. So here is one. And you can see they came as bare root and you can see they're just starting to, to leaf up. So I've got uh, two here two here and it's like a little pathway through and then I've started planting them along this edge. The other thing I discovered is that somebody at some point, not recently, uh, but in the past has dumped loads of fence posts just down here in our pit. Um, now they are, they're not great, they're quite thin, but they're also quite long, which is good. They're about, I would say they're kind of six foot, seven foot long. They're not going to be used to stop fencing, but they will make the ideal fence posts for along this edge. And then all I need to do is just get some half rounds to make the balustrades across. They'll also be perfect for the entrance to the pit over here, um, just to make a sort, of, a sort of fenced walkway through. So I'm gonna fish some of those out and get them up here today. So I've got my posts in, there's four of them, to this side and then to this side. Um, they're a bit of a pain to get in because they are old, old fence posts and they're broken so they don't have the spiky point to help them go in but that's fine. As I said these aren't going to be used as stop fencing, it's, it's literally aesthetics. Um, so I put in my roses down here and I'm also going to put in some, some herbs, so I'm going to put in some sage and some little rosebush shrubs. Um, just so that when you're approaching this area, which is where we're going to hold experience days, meet the goats and, and all of our kind of on-site things like that, just as you approach, it'll be pretty to look at. Um, the stop fencing is here. It's just a three, it's just a 80 centimetres tall one. Um, and what I, you can see on the post, it comes up to about here. I will probably put a single strand of wire just along the top, just so that when the goats are in this area, they kind of stay with us rather than jump out. I have forgotten my pliers, however, so I need to go home and get them so I can cut this. Um, but then there'll just be a strand along here, and then this will be the gate area, and then there'll be a strand along there. So that's this afternoon's job. So if you've enjoyed seeing these new arrivals, then check out the video just up here to when JJ arrived, and I'll see you in that video with some more updates and tidbits about the breeding programme.